Please, music. A bailar, a bailar. What makes Colombian music distinct? I mean, it's it's got its own things. I mean, it's got the importance of the accordion, um, the tiple, which you do not find typically in, in other forms of Latin music, um, the rhythms that are distinct. The vallenato rhythm is different from a Dominican merengue rhythm, is different from a, diff a Puerto Rican plena rhythm. There's just these subtle variations in the instruments and, and how they're played. It's important to get those right. You know, that's, that's, that's the fun of the, the specificity of writing music for this region. With Encanto, we've got a lot of family members. I think with every musical project I embark on, I'm trying to find the pulse of the characters, first and foremost. What is Mirabel's pulse? How is that different from Abuela's pulse? How is that different from Bruno's pulse? How is that different from Pepa's pulse? There are songs that are solo journeys. You know, when you hear from Mirabel's sister, Luisa, it's a very contemporary Colombian reggaeton sound because um, she's got this very cool, very tough exterior. And then I wanted to sort of peel away and deconstruct that over the course of the song. And then you have Isabella, who sounds like 90s rock in Espanol. And then in the last song, I'm smashing those themes together. That's the fun of building a musical score, is when you find all those pulses, and then you start to have them sing in duets and trios, really interesting combinations and stuff start to pop up. The whole movie has this beautiful tapestry that feels like a very unique whole that couldn't have come from any other place. All of that together has created something that is really unique and really special and very specific, I think, both to region and also the experiences of the characters throughout the movie. Every song in this is going to be something you want to like listen to on the radio and like dance in your living room too because all of them have like amazing beats. They're really poppy and stand out. It doesn't sound like any other Disney movie. We were incredibly lucky to find Jermaine Franco to do the score for this film. Early on, we had initial discussions about what type of score they were looking for. And we talked about what would the sound of magical realism sound like. You, know, you read the stories of Gabriel Garcia Marquez, and you go into those worlds, and you think, how would the, what would this sound like? The first time Jermaine played us the main theme of the Encanto, of that magic, I think the first thing we said was, that sounds like magical realism. I wanted to find la voz femenina, the feminine voice of the music of Colombia, because I feel that the voice of the Latina woman is very important in our society, in our world, because a lot of women in Latin America have been shouldering a lot of responsibility of working and taking care of their families. And I wanted to give that struggle and the persistence and the courage some sort of a voice through the music. certainly aware of her amazing work on Coco, but one of the things that Jermaine specializes in is blending all these different styles of music and different instrumentation into something truly wonderful, this tapestry that we needed for Encanto, Encanto's soundtrack, to the, to the point where she actually was ordering handcrafted marimbas from Colombia just for Encanto, uh, that she was unpacking the week of the score recording, which was incredible, the fact that she takes so much care uh, in what she does, and someone who had so much, so much personal investment in talking about this family in a musical way. What I did was just imagine a world beyond the world we live in now. And it's it, like there's another plane. And so in this, in this world, in the story, people have magical powers. And so it's, it's almost like another dimension of sound. It's just a lot you simply got to know. So welcome to family Madrigal, the home of the family Madrigal. 
So Familia Madrigal was a, a hugely challenging song, and <laughs> we told Lynn in a matter of just a few minutes, the audience has to understand everyone in this family, the magical gifts, needs to understand what they do for the community, and it had to be crazy entertaining. Nearly every cast member is actually part of a chorus. And it's a great show piece for Mirabelle, too, because Mirabelle is singing this song, and so her personality comes out. Lord. Steph Beatrice is an amazing singer and an amazing actress, and it's been so exciting to write to her voice, which is incredibly musical and bubbly and uh, just kind of perfect for Mirabelle. I am such a big Disney fan, and I grew up with this music, and I grew up singing songs to myself in my mirror when I was a kid. The whole thing felt really surreal. What's your gift? And she goes, let me recap. Just to review the family Madrigal, let's go. It starts with Abuela and then Tia Pepa. She handles the weather. Mirabel. My mom, Julieta, can make you feel better with just one arepa. And it gets faster and faster and faster. And that was really fun to construct. This incredible verbal fuselage, but it's all about avoiding the issue. And that's a really great way to reveal character. That's life in the family, Madrigal. Colombia Me Encanto is like a traditional vallenato. I was really inspired by Carlos Vives' music. And then to actually have Carlos Vives sing the song I wrote inspired by his work and his genre was just sort of the icing on the cake. Noche de fiesta, todo viene a celebrar. Noche de fiesta, todo llega para gozar. Sigue bailando, contento en mi paraíso y revelando. This is a party song. You know, vallenatos are what we put on at parties. So I wanted to just write the most joyous song possible. And so it's the lyrics are all just sort of a love letter to this house, to this part of the world, and to Colombia itself. To have the person who brought vallenato to the world be in this movie is just, just incredible. That was just a joy, beginning to end to write. And then it gets ratcheted up to the nth degree when you have Carlos's vocals and his incredible musicians on top. Colombia. Luisa also has one of the most fun songs of the movie. I'm the strong one, I'm not nervous. I'm as tough as the crust of the earth is. Okay. Once we've identified where the moments are that the character's emotions are kind of too big for words and need to have music, then we hand it over to Lin Manuel and he turns it into an amazing song. Take a trip, trip, trip that'll never stop. Whoa. Luisa, who is accustomed to bearing everyone's burdens, that is sort of a fantastical outgrowth of something that I think plagues a lot of oldest siblings in families. And so musicalizing that was really exciting. And so I wrote a reggaeton song called Surface Pressure. And it was about how she's very cool on the surface and there's nothing she can handle, but under it, there's all this stuff. So I just wrote the most wild and crazy internal rhymes and then exposed how much Luisa longs to relax. But wait, if I could shake the crushing weight. Maybe I overdo it. Yep. No cracks, no breaks, no mistakes, no pressure. Sweet. Thank y'all. Yeah. You are done. Why am I in your vision, Bruno? <gasps> we don't talk about Bruno. All right.
right. So are we starting at... Um... Jared had worked with Lynn on Moana before. I had never met him. I was a huge admirer of his work, but I, I, I didn't know how the experience would be working with him. But the amazing thing is that he's such a, an amazing collaborator. And once he locks onto something, how quickly he can come up with something brilliant. There was one call we were on, I think it was to talking about um, Bruno's song. We don't talk about Bruno. And he literally said, okay, it's sort of a sort of a spooky ghost story. And he kind of turns it literally to the piano and does what <laughs> almost exactly what you hear in the Bruno song, like dun dun dun. We don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. And he just played it. And it was like, oh, okay, well that's done. So he literally kind of came up with that in in seconds. And then he would disappear for a week or so and come back with this incredible demo. <laughs> We Don't Talk About Bruno is the family gossip song. That was really exciting because every verse and every stanza, we got to meet a different character. And they're all kind of riding the same musical landscape, but they ride it completely differently. This is awesome. Hello. I wrote Dolores first. She's got this very hushed, quiet little patter section, you know. And they kind of took the ball and ran with that. Good to live in fear of Bruno stuttering or stumbling. I can always hear him sort of muttering and mumbling. I associate him with the sound of falling sand. Well, good night! What? We don't talk about Bruno as one of the sequences that highlights choreography the most. And Jamal Sims, our choreographer, did an absolutely incredible job creating something so physical, incorporating dances of Columbia. And to see Peppa and Felix like singing about this mysterious guy while doing these beautiful dance moves. And Jamal also worked with Kai, who is Colombian. And so there's a lot of Colombian dance that's incorporated within the amazing choreography. Diving into it. Let's go. Let's do it. Awesome. Great. When I got into the room with Kai, and then we also had a group of Latino and Latina skeleton dancers, it started to come together. We don't talk about funnest time working on this particular sequence just because of the spirit of all of us in the room together. We started vibing and all of a sudden I'd be like, oh, let's do this. And Kai would be like, oh, but let's try it like that. So humbling, we slept up a lie in the family fumbling, grappling with prophecies they couldn't understand. Do you understand? It was that collaborative effort that I think was really magical. And also, Lynn manuel made the story easy as well because the way he wrote that song, all you had to do was just let it take you and you would just go along for the ride. Yeah. Don't talk There was a point where we figured out that Alma, Abuela Alma, needed to tell us her story in a song. What I really wanted to do was kind of write a song that felt like it always existed, a very campesino feeling folk song. And so in looking at the imagery for the film, one of the most beautiful things is when Abuela's candle becomes a butterfly. So I decided to write a song called Dos Oruguitas. It means two caterpillars. And it's about two caterpillars who are in love and are scared to let go of each other, but they have to let go of each other, otherwise they don't get to go to their next form. It's about letting go so the miracle can happen. Dos oruguitas, enamoradas. When you do voiceover, you definitely gotta approach whatever it is you're doing different than when you are a singer or a songwriter working on your own album, which is like you express everything the way you wanted to because you're yourself. No, here you're an actor. No 
se aguante más Hay que crecer, aparte y volver Hacia adelante seguirás, vienen milagros It comments on Abuela Alma and Abuelo Pedro and about how they had to change. They had to lean into the scariest things for the next thing to happen and how that's sort of the lesson for Abuela. One of the things that was really moving to me was that Sebastian is about the same age as Abuelo Pedro was when Alma and he first began their relationship. I can't hear that song and not tear up. I just think it's a beautiful song. I love the journey it takes you on and how intimate it sounds. I think it's the real departure from things we may have done in the past, and I love it. Sebastián Yatra sings it so beautifully. The storytelling is so crystal clear. It gives me chills to, to hear him sing it. I have to dig deep and feel what he's feeling. That is fun for me because you start singing the song a certain way and then you just start molding it into something that has a little part of you, but it's not you. It's him. <laughs> The musical real estate is so precious, and so to try to get as much Colombian music into the film is not an easy ask. And we sweated every detail, um, both in the visuals of the film and in the musical diversity of the film, uh, to make sure uh, that uh, Colombia itself felt seen and represented. From the beginning, we wanted to just put something out to the world that would bring them different types of music. The music of Encanto should really surprise people. Whatever you think the music's going to be in a movie like this, it will not be that.